Hey guys, we're Flying Casual. I'm James Rizile that you normally see from here, but I'm joined with some very special guests. They're on to my, the, that side of the screen somewhere. So who are you guys? Hey, uh, we are Rebel Watch. Uh, I'm Ez, and uh, this here's Mike. Howdy. So, thanks um, thanks yeah. for being here, guys. Thanks yeah. for having thanks us. Thanks for having us, man. It's awesome. We've been trying to collaborate for 67 years now. That's right. Yeah, I believe it's long it's been time a, coming. It's been a yeah. long. It's been a couple of months though. I think like a month, right. two months. It has. Yeah. yeah, we had to push it back a couple of times, and then the holidays got in the way, and what have you. But yeah, we're here. Actually, the technical difficulties almost kept Mike and I down. Almost shut the channel down. Almost shut the damn channel down. We couldn't get the camera to work. OBS. <laughs> we had all sorts of a- issues going. It was on. a Sith plot. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, it was a Sith plot by. Brock Smink. That's right. Yeah, Brock. Brock. <laughs> Brock wishes he was here, but he's at a wedding in Alberta getting shit faced. Yeah, <laughs> just to, you know, good for just him. To as we are as well. So. Yeah, you got yeah. Yeah. We could argue he's taking the Barash Barash vow. Barash vow. He is. The yeah. Barash vow. We'll say it quickly. <laughs> That's what he's taking. He's gone. He's in exile. But who else took that vow? Possibly something we'll talk about in a little tiny bit. Before we get to that, would you guys mind talking to me a little bit? About the Barash vow? Mm. Yeah, so, okay, it first kind of was mentioned, the first mention is in Darth Vader, um, that the new comic, it's issue number two, right? Yes, sir. And it basically, it's this, I think, it, I don't know if it was a device to sort of like, you know, when we're bleeding kyber crystals, it's like Darth Vader has to um, hunt down a, a Jedi, and after Order 66, it's like, there are no Jedi left, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not sure if they made up the Barash vow for that, or what have you, but it was not mentioned until this comic. Um, and so I guess over, what they say? 40,000 Jedi over the long history of the Jedi order have taken the brash. Um, and they go into exile. It's sort of a, a, a penance. Yeah. Right. It's like a, a self punishment or something or, or such. Yeah. So it's, um, I, I don't know. I don't, there's not much on it. We actually had to go to Wikipedia. Well, first we read it in the comic and then we went to Wikipedia <laughs> To kind of look into it more, and um, seems it may be a vow of peace because the Jedi right. that took it was only really known to be a warrior. They mentioned when he was oh, yeah. training to become a Jedi, he didn't study anything but pretty much combat. Yeah, so you maybe think that maybe he did something that caused him yep. to go into this vow as a, a you know, yeah, like he had to. It was I don't know, I don't know what would make one want to say like they have no um so even when they felt in the force this is interesting so like i think vader mentions this even when they felt in the force that the order 66 had happened and uh the jedi um their demise and all, all that good um terrible stuff um they can't do anything about it they can't respond at all yeah so maybe a vow of peace yeah that's basically all we know about it it's um yeah actually vow of peace actually is kind of interesting to me because uh brock who does the rebels come with me uh, who's who took this vow, obviously, and a few yeah, other yeah. people. They have, they kind of, I don't know if they fully believe it or not, but they have this idea that perhaps Luke might have killed Ray's parents at some point. That's like a, wow. a theory that goes around. And if that's the case, for whatever reason, maybe he did take this vow, and that's maybe why he went in search for this first Jedi temple. Gotcha. Wow, James I, just went and just dropped one on us. Dropped right a little there. bomb there. We we had kind of a similar <laughs> thought that maybe he did something really terrible. I kind of thought maybe he just annihilated uh, the Knights of Ren when they attacked the academy or something, or took out some of his own pupils or something. Or maybe I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I I don't know. That's interesting. That he the, the idea that he would kill Ray's parents. Yeah. That's uh, that's Ooh. making me think here. I mean. And then he well, we don't that. know who they are, so right. That's true. And then when would that have happened? You know, it's interesting. It's to think, did he, did he, did he kill them? And then the fall of the temple, ha- his own order happens, and then he has to. Then he goes into exile. You know, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Um, but I mean, that's the question. That's what we're going to talk about today, right? Is is do we think Luke Skywalker took the Barash vow? Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What we're going to talk about. Did Luke Skywalker take the brush out? Boop, 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 boop. That's the intro to yep. the show. <laughs> there it is. Uh, we, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> no, this will not be edited because we don't do that here. Uh, yeah, but did God. he take it? Do you guys think he took it? Let's. Well, let's just first of all, what do you? Uh, uh, what's it kind of uh, mystified me a little bit is he's in exile. So you've got mm-hmm. uh, the first order is, is striking, and I mean, like they annihilate um, the Republic. You know, like yeah. they, I, they. 
are able. I don't know. He's he's nowhere. I kept thinking. I, I've I've said this many times in the Force Awakens. I thought he when the when the lightsaber when Ray catches the lightsaber. I thought there's Luke. That's where Luke's stepping in. He's gonna get yeah. the lightsaber. But like yeah. he has no role. He hasn't had a role for like six years. He's no. been he's vanished. And so that's always been like why like Luke the galaxy is in peril. You know like where the hell you at? Like you're our hero. Like yeah. what caused you to go? And is it just the fall of your academy? Or did he have something to do with that? Did I'm I'm starting to think that like, if it's not Luke's fault, then why is he in this type of exile and saying the Jedi needs to end? I'm starting to think it is more Luke's fault in some way, like you mentioned with either yeah. Ray's parents or, or maybe just the thought that he failed uh, Ben Solo and that's mm-hmm. he's kind of now punishing himself and and maybe trying to learn from that and get away from all of it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just, I don't know. I just go back to the exile and think to myself, I'm not really sure about the, the vow. I think from what we understand about the vow, it is something that you maybe take when you've done something wrong or if you disagree with the order yeah. in a sense. Um, Which I, I think he disagrees with the order. That's where I, my head's at right now because yeah. everything we learn from, and I've said this all the time, so people that watch it probably annoyed with me. But when you watch the original trilogy, he kind of learns and he learns that. And from the prequels, what we learned is that the Jedi Order was wrong in the way yep. they saw things. Like they started right. in a good place and it kind of evolved, you know, mm-hmm. much like religions do and things like that. And so I think Luke learned that. And then the way this new trilogy seems to go is almost like he kind of forgets that at some point. He's like, no, I'll just redo the, the Jedi Order, rebuild the Jedi Order, even yeah. though I know it's wrong. And so maybe he realizes that. And then that has nothing to do with him killing Ray's parents or anything, but he's the reason that Kylo Ren, Ben got so strong and was able to turn and be so strong when he turned and he sees that as a problem. And so he, he sends himself off into exile. Maybe yeah. that's why, like, just because he's like, Oh no, I brought this back on and it was my job to crush, to stop this, cease yeah. it from happening. And instead yeah. I, I kept it prolonging it. Absolutely. Yeah, here's a question. Do you think, so like we've often kind of speculated on our channel and just kind of wondered, was he searching for this temple before the fall of his own order. Yeah. Do you think, like, or I guess the other question is, uh, did he foresee it happening maybe? Or was he like, I guess I don't know how to put this. Was he there when his order fell or when they were attacked? Because if he wasn't, what was he doing? Yeah. You know? So what what are your thoughts on that? Like, was he around? That's interesting. I know they've, they've been setting up that he has been searching for artifacts, right? In the comics and and all the new expanded universe stuff so i but that's a good question was he looking for that temple before all of this went down because in my mind i never thought of it till you (laughs) said it just now i've always thought that something happened he decided to leave and go to the jedi temple but Mm -hmm. maybe he maybe or maybe not sidetrack yeah maybe it was the artifacts like you were saying maybe the artifacts yeah there could be something there though and maybe it's the journal of the wills maybe it's that book that we see him because yep. now we know it's him that touches that book right the mm-hmm. because yeah. the very yeah. fair pictures and yep. Then yep. you put it all Sorry. together you can tell that's it so maybe he's looking for the that book or maybe he yeah i don't know I, you know i'm gonna stick with he went there after because he yeah, had to figure it out. and maybe yeah. it was yoda that guided him there or Could've. someone like that we yeah, kind of but... after reading empire's end and thrawn we kind of speculated that maybe he's for seeing this unknown threat out there and maybe kind of took his eye off the ball with Ben and maybe things happening closer to home that maybe Snoke was kind of masking everything and, and Luke was kind of focused elsewhere. Well, yeah. Or just something like, uh, I've talked a lot about like Ben Solo's, how he neglected Ben or maybe neglected his order as maybe there were, I don't know, some of his Padawan learners or what have you. And he's searching for, like you said, uh, James, either those artifacts or um, searching for um, who knows what, the journal. Mm-hmm. But it just seems like he is a little bit distracted. He's, he's kind of out there. Um, like you said, he got, got his eye off the ball. I don't know. I, I think that answers if that's – maybe I'm trying to figure out what he is faulting himself for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like what was it that is that he is sort of punishing himself if this is the Barash vow? What is it that he's done to the order or to the galaxy that he thinks he needs to make up for? Yeah. In a sense, I don't know. Absolutely. So, it could be any number of things. It could be the Knights of Ren. It could be he killed Ray's parents. It could be. It could just be as simple as he feels responsible for Kylo joining Snoke or allowing yeah. Snoke to to do. Who do you, yeah. to cut myself off here? 
for very for professionally. <laughs> who do you guys think Snoke? Can I just yeah. I, we haven't talked about yeah. this, but who do you think Snoke yeah. is? Like, because Snoke yeah. has been around since Leia was pregnant with Ben. Right, you know that. And and she she acknowledges his existence in the Force Awakens in the deleted scene. Han Solo with the storm and the stormtroopers. They all kind of talk yeah. about Snoke, like, and it's kind of. I'm glad they cut that scene because it. Right. Snoke just doesn't seem mysterious or evil yeah. when you're like Snoke, Supreme Leader Snoke. And yeah. It's almost like a. Yeah. And then and then Han Solo even makes a joke out of it. So do you think Snoke is as powerful as we all believe he is, and who do you think he is? Well, the novelization I think makes it seem like he's been around and involved even in maybe close enough to where I mean we know Leia and Han seem to maybe know of his existence prior to him right. becoming the Supreme Leader. Um, and maybe even Luke as well. So maybe he was someone that they trusted and that he was able to, or maybe he's masking himself. He he was pretending to be someone else, but I'm not sure of his powers because they say he's there. There there are no Sith Lord in the force awakens, right? Right. There's no Sith Lords. So I think they said that. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure Pablo confirmed that. So, so what is he? And that's, that's what's scary. And that's, we've kind of, speculated that maybe he is from those unknown regions because I say this a lot when we talk about Thrawn. If Thrawn yeah. is scared of something from oh, the yeah. unknown regions, I'm scared. Right. Because and that could very well be Snoke. It could be Snoke could be just the beginning to something big. Right. I for me, one thing that really stuck out um in the novelization was when um Leia is actually it's the whole scene where she says, you know, no, it was Snoke. And I didn't realize this until not too long ago. Um she kept that from Han. Han was like, why didn't you tell me? Yeah. And it's in the novelization. He was just like, why didn't you tell me that Snoke was sort of the one behind this? And I was like, wait a second. That doesn't seem quite right. It seems like he always knew that Snoke was yeah. involved, but it seemed like Leia kind of hid this in the novelization. I, I don't have it in front of me, but I was reading it actually, ironically, for my uh, for the Raylo video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, it was like Leia had sort of hidden this fact from Han because she was afraid that Han would go seek out Supreme Leader Snow, like he knew him, like he knew him, or like he was some. If 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 Han knew that his son was turned by something tangible, some person, something that he could go out and actually strike against, I think Leia thought maybe he would go, you know, take the opportunity to to take that person out and save his son. But I I'm starting to think. I used to think right after we we, we read Thrawn that Snoke was was from the unknown region. Yeah. Okay. I'm starting to think. Perhaps not. And perhaps he is actually just someone who has been around sort of like Palpatine. Palpatine was, you know, Oshiv was around, was a was a senator, Mm -hmm. um, was all these different things. And then slowly, you know, we figure out that he's actually this in hiding in plain sight. I kind of wonder if Snoke maybe did something like that because they all seem to know him pretty well. Like he's Uh somebody that we know. So definitely. I don't think he's like this, though. Yeah, no, nope. sure. you're completely out of the place. <laughs> I don't think so. I, no, I yeah. used to think that, but then with the uh, with the release of Thrawn and looking at the novelization, I'm just sort of like, eh, maybe not. Plagueis would tie it in very well. I was really hoping okay for with that it, after watching it with the 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 exact music that we heard when we're introduced to Snoke when they mentioned Plagueis in Episode Three. I, for hands down, thought it was was Plagueis, but yeah. now it seems too obvious. Yeah. Yeah. What do you guys think? I mean, who who are you thinking that? But that's when you say obvious, that's what because my thing with The Force Awakens that intrigues me the most is when the movie ended. When I first saw the movie, I thought Ray was Luke's daughter. And I mm-hmm. thought the film was going to end with her giving him that lightsaber back. And he sh- and she was he was she was going to say father or he was going to say, oh, yeah. it's yeah. you, my daughter, that something happened. around those lines. And that didn't happen. And I was like, well, that could happen next. And then I started getting text messages from friends saying, so that's Luke's daughter. So that's Luke's daughter. And everyone said that was Luke's daughter. And mm-hmm. then I was like, well, no, now it can't be Luke's daughter because yeah. if everybody <laughs> is guessing it's Luke's daughter. <laughs> then like, and if, it, if she happens to be Luke's daughter, that's got to be like the first thing that happens in the movie. Yeah, right. For what we've seen, that's not going to – that's not the case, right? Right. Yep. right. So uh, Andrew – here and Josh from the Den of Nerds, they both are on the same page where they think Snoke might be a fraud, where he knows what Thrawn's talking about in the unknown regions, and he's just presenting himself as possibly being that. Oh, and wow, so everyone is, is assuming that he is some big, great threat, and he's more powerful than them. The only thing for me that doesn't really tie with that is 
then why would he be trusted by Leia and Ben and Han? Both, like, right. Unless you're right about Han, with Han not knowing, which I'm guessing you are. So, or even possibly Luke trusting him, then that mm-hmm. doesn't make so much sense to me why they would allow that. And I'm really, I I always like the idea of him being, and you, you heard this in your shows, a shaman of the wills or a fallen will is something that yeah. I've always very much enjoyed. Yeah. But then that would make him really very powerful almost. And would it be too powerful for him to like, well, why wouldn't he just overtake everything if he's that powerful, you know? Yeah. So there has, mm-hmm. there almost has to be, I know he's not a human, but he has to be humanized to the Palpatine point where he still has to be a person of yeah. some sort, possibly. I could be completely wrong, but. Right. Definitely. Yeah. So with real quickly with the shaman of the wills, what is interesting about that is I think if he's a fallen will, like you said, a fallen will would probably be too powerful. But I go back to shaman of the will, uh, shaman of the wills. Uh, and when Qui-Gon is, uh, I guess it was a deleted scene from episode three. And he's talking about where, where he learned the power to become one with the force. And a shaman seems like it might be like a lesser state. You got guardians of the wills. You've got, um, you know, a keeper of the wills, which is mentioned somewhere along the line. But the, the, the wills themselves seem like gods, right? Don't they seem yeah. like gods? So I, I'm thinking a shaman would be someone, you know, priest-like or something that would worship them, but would study their teachings pretty closely. So I was thinking of shaman being a little, like, more powerful than a, than a Jedi knight, but yet that one that could teach Qui-Gon, and Qui-Gon could learn things from him, but maybe not as powerful as the wills in which he worships. So... Yeah, I don't know. That would be really interesting if he was this wayward shaman that has sort of turned dark side. I don't know if that's even possible, but I do think that they are talking more about the wills with, you know, uh, Rogue One and uh, just the fact that yeah. we have the Guardians of the Wills and the book that we see in uh, in the trailer. I'm thinking they're bringing that back. They're slowly piece by piece. We, we might not ever see any of that on screen, but they're hinting and talking about things that uh, are ancient and lore like material so definitely yeah yeah i don't know i had a friend of mine he was like why would they mention the kyber crystal in rogue one and i said i think that's for episode eight and i think i think Mm -hmm. what they're going to do with these spinoffs maybe not han solo but i think the genius of the spinoffs is that you know we we read the books so Mm -hmm. we know we know the backstories of this and that but the average viewer doesn't read the books and i think it's genius because they're going to go see rogue one they're going to go see han solo so if you show me a kyber crystal in Rogue One, then when you show it to me in Last Jedi, I know yep. what it is. If That's you right. mention the Guardian of the Wills, and then you have a Journal of the Wills in Last Jedi, right. I know something about it because it's already in, in in my vocabulary now because yeah. I've watched Rogue One. And I think that's I like those I think that's what they're doing. I think you're right. They're planting the seeds for us to go forward. And whether or not the wills play out in any sort of big way, we don't yeah. know. But I think we're gonna get something to that effect. Yeah, I do too. And like you said, it's it, it's the fact that they're in. I, when I saw that they were in Rogue One, I was like, "Dear God, they're doing this!" It's not just in a, in, in a book or a comic book or something, you know. So, so it's like the Barash Vow, which we were talking about earlier. It's like it's in a comic book. Yeah. It could just be a device that um, they needed to use so that Vader can hunt down a Jedi. So <laughs> there are still Jedi out there that he can find and things like that. Yeah. But to get his Kyber crystal. But yeah, you're, you're like. Um, it being in Rogue One is a big deal. That's right? a good point. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Good point. Wow, yeah, we I mean, went yeah, we kind of went all over the place <laughs> Whoa, let's go back to the vow. It could <laughs> simply be just for him to get, uh, to need a Jedi because I think that's, yeah, you're right. But I mean, he needs a, he needs a Jedi to get that lightsaber and blah, 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 blah. And that's but where the story is going. It, it, it raises, uh, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, how many other Jedi then took this vow? Like, are there other Jedi that are possibly, they took the vow and then, you know, are they once the the order is sort of uh, destroyed? Are they still keeping to the vow? Are they? And it doesn't seem like it seems like this Jedi, uh, Kyrak or Karak, Karak, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, it seems like he would still lift a finger for like a small villager. Like he would, he's still helping, and he's mm-hmm. he's more guided by the Force, not by the directions of Yoda, Mace Windu, and the Order. He's mm-hmm. just sort of given himself to the Force in a sense. So I kind of wondered, like, how many more Jedi are out there like that? And will we hear of any of the, I don't know. It's, and again, it's only in a comic book. So it's sort of like, you know, how much are we going to get yeah. out of that? But I thought it was a kind of a big thing because it's, it's its first mention was in this comic book. I'm like, whoa, I thought maybe I'd missed something. I was like, is that something I was supposed to know about that we had in Legends? But I, I looked it up and, and that was its first mention. Yeah. So interesting. Definitely. 
But. Yeah, it's just in a comic book, like you said, like they could still plant seeds in comics. And I think the Screaming Citadel comic, I don't know if you've read that one at oh. all. Mm-mm. It's, no, uh, it's on the list. It has, what does it have? I haven't read it either. <laughs> Brock yeah. has, he's told me about it. But it has like these vampire soul sucker type things. Oh, I've heard it. about wow. this. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. like some of it, I, I've read some online. I'm like, well, okay, whatever. It's a comic right. book. I'll let it go. But, but they're going back to Snoke because that's where we always go. There's yeah. that idea that maybe he he uh, can suck the souls or he's using Kylo Ren for his body or something like that. And maybe they're planting seeds to let you know that this exists in this universe. Even if it's for a small group of fans, it's still there. And it's just something subtle they're doing because they're like, well, we're going to do it. Let's just, so, Mm -hmm. you know, so Mm -hmm. Luke might've taken that vow and this comic could be completely separate from the last Jedi's version of that vow. But they're like, well, it exists. Let's just use it. And that's how it could be. Cause it might not be, I mean, it might not, it's not a twist. If Luke takes that vow, I don't think right. it's a big, we're all going to be like, oh my God. Like, right. you know, we're going to be like, okay, I took a vow. Got it. Moving right. On. Ex- right. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It, it's, it explains, yeah, it was, but now that they've dropped it before the last Jedi, you know, it's not, like you said, it's not that big of a deal. If it's something that he has done, it's more so a bigger deal. Like why would he take it? And what was it that caused him to go into that exile? Um, and I just keep, you kind of just stunned me with the whole him killing Ray's parents. Why would he do that? Why would he kill Ray's dev have the, has uh, Andrew or Brock or anybody talked about that? Like why? Uh, no, I don't think they've ever spoken on that. But it could be any number of reasons. Like there, I think uh, I Instagram artist drew a sketch or a painting or something of Kylo telling Ray that Luke killed her parents. Like no, Luke killed your parents. I think was the a wow. thing on it because oh, Brock's been saying it forever. Then he's like, look at this. I'm telling you, this is it. And he hasn't spoken about it in weeks, wow. and that might be why our views have gone down. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, I, I can't. Fig- I couldn't think of why. It could just be, like, it could even be Snoke got into Luke as well, or maybe Luke thought that they were bad. Or I were mean, they on the if- Death Star. Well, or <laughs> uh, no, maybe. What, what what if it was like, um, you know, like. Um, like you're saying, maybe Luke, maybe she's a force sensitive, you know, child from these two. Because in in Luke's new order, my question, I guess, is is are they allowed? Is is attachment still forbidden, or mm-hmm. can they marry like Mara Jade did, you know, back in Legends? Can that actually happen? If so, then maybe her parents were a part of his order, turned bad. He has to kill them. Takes has a vision, maybe sees that he needs to spare this child and and put her on Jakku, and she's going to come into play later on. I mean. I don't know. Maybe Snoke was influencing more people than Ben Solo and had to try, you know, because yeah. he's got 30 years there to work with to where it's like the ultimate prize is, you know, Ben Solo. But maybe there were other people that he was stealing from Luke along the way. I don't know. I don't know. Just I, you got you just mentioned that. I just kind of thought maybe uh, I don't know. Yeah, it's a huge possibility. I mean, he, Snoke likes Kylo because according to Wikipedia, because of how strong he is in the light and the dark right but mm-hmm. he could have easily i mean the first order is another piece of this puzzle is the first order and yeah. uh brendel hawks and ray sloan and where are where are they and how does snoke tie into them and the knights of Ren? there's like snoke is at the top of this pyramid that we don't have the pieces to figure out right now yeah. i see you i see you thinking over there <laughs> i don't know because i i want to talk about the the older public I, okay. I, 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 what happened to Snow? I mean, that was huge. When, when the Rebels episode came and we see um, Ezra in the old Sith temple, he lights up that green oh, lightsaber yeah. that had that kind of style. crossbar style. Yeah. I, I mean, it immediately made me think that, that Snoke is coming from the old, old well, yeah. Republic. So what Mike's getting at is, is, is why does he have that style of lightsaber? Who taught him <laughs> to create that lightsaber? Yeah. Who taught him to bleed a kyber crystal? If that but is, if that's is his kyber crystal bleeding because it's not, it's like it's jittery, right? It's not that's a, right. it's exactly. cracked or so. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I and I that when they first came with the whole bleeding kyber crystal thing, I was kind of like, well, his is you know, like you said, cracked or what have you. Maybe he just stole that crystal because yeah. I'm thinking once the rule of two is over and Palpatine is is done, it's like Pablo has kind of said these are not Sith anymore, so really yeah. those traditions aren't carrying on. But you're right. I don't know why the hilt. 
of his lightsaber looks so reminiscent of Old Republic. It just I just um, thought maybe it would open it up to, I mean, everyone wants an Old Republic, whether it's a Netflix series or what. Everyone is crying out for an Old Republic series of some sort. I thought maybe that could tie it in really well, and we could learn where Snow came from. We can learn um, all this good stuff. I don't know. Well, I'm not so sure that Snoke is, is that far back, but... Maybe he has, I don't know. I mean, Jesus Christ, who knows where Snoke is from? Like, I mean, that's the thing. It's like, he says he saw the, you know, uh, the rise, rise and the fall, fall, you know? So, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't there longer or that he didn't come from, you know, the unknown region. I mean, really, he kind of parallels Thrawn a little bit because Thrawn also was watching on the, mm-hmm. on the outskirts of the uh, galaxy, was watching, um, you know, the Clone Wars happen and then watching yeah. uh, the rise of the Empire. So, I, but I don't know just, we, yeah. unlike Thrawn, he was there. He watched over Ben Solo when Leia was pregnant with him. Right, that's right. That's very true. That yeah, that's that's a piece. I like. I love the idea that he could be tied to the Old Republic. I I mean, why not? And I think some we're going to get something from the Old Republic at some point in film or TV or whatever internet, whatever it is. We're going to get something, but they need a Rogue One to tie us into that. Yeah. Yeah. Like they like they need like a spit like something oh, needs yeah. to happen for us yeah. to be like for not us but for the others to be like oh what is that how what happened ten thousand years ago a thousand years Definitely. ago right. oh that okay let's watch that right. that's what's right. yeah. gonna happen and but Snoke is a could or Ray Ray could even be your en- entryway into that what mm-hmm. if I I've always liked the idea that she could be a I don't want to sound stupid, but like a reincarnated, maybe like the very first Jedi or she, yeah. I don't know if you guys remember this, but there was a rumor. Uh, when actually it was like right when we first started doing the podcast before we were on YouTube here, like almost a year ago where there was a, a scene from the last Jedi rumored where there was, Luke was telling Ray about the Jedi and there was a tree and that, and it was a, these two kids were at the tree yep. and you guys remember that? Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And then that's, brother killed the sister then went home and killed the parents and i always like the, the idea that maybe that's ray or maybe that's snoke too but i always like the idea that maybe the girl is ray or some kind of form of ray right yeah, yeah. I, I i've heard a lot of people talk about her being yeah this reincarnate sort of like i'm not sure if it's the one or the chosen one maybe not that but like you said sort of that first um we had somebody on our channel comparing it back to i don't know if you remember in clone wars you've got the brother the sister and the father yeah I've heard a lot of people try to make those comparisons and see, like, symbolically, where does she, you know, um, fit there? Is she, just since she's so such a sweetheart, is she just the sister, you know, and then is, I don't know, it just seems too, that seems too easy. It does. Well, like James said, it doesn't that seem kind of far out there, though, for your common yes. Star Wars film fan, right? Yeah, I would need some explaining by Luke. Like you said, that, that rumor if Luke is explaining something like that through a force tree, which it sounds like there's going to be a force tree in this, right? I mean, it's, that yeah. sounds like definitely knows there's going to be. So, um, and we were actually just watching forces of destiny and, and we was, we pointed out the force tree in the temple. It's, Yoda, temple. And, and, it's yeah. everywhere. So the, yeah. But, um, so yeah, you would need like, you would need Luke Skywalker to explain this a little bit more. We would need to hear it in, in a big, um, movie picture like this for us to, to go back and maybe get into some of the old Republic stuff or get into some of these, prophecies or the beginning of the order slash force so we know that there's going to be a lot of force visions and there's one of the flashback force visions we hear yes and and that shot of ray coming out of wherever putting her hand down yeah breathing heavily we're all i don't know how you guys feel but a lot of people are just presuming that that is her coming out of a force vision or hearing some kind of crazy story from luke skywalker that maybe she's not ready to hear yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> originally, this is funny, you will think this is funny, James, uh, originally when we first saw it, <laughs> we were walking out, Mike goes, Mike was like, uh, was Luke Skywalker just force choking Ray? <laughs> I, I mean, it's, <laughs> is it's he really, not that is, crazy. <laughs> is the training like really intense or what's going on here, you know? Just a slight um, choke and saying, like, <laughs> I, I didn't learn my lesson. I just uh, went after the Emperor. Oh, I just went she's after She's gasping Vader. for air, he's like, just breathe. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I you know, to that, the dark side. to that point, I think Luke might beat the crap out of her in yeah. Yeah. So, some way. I think that's going to happen. Trend. Yeah. Yeah. Trend harsh. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely well. Yeah. Can I ask you guys, where did you guys see the trailer? for? The, you guys were at Celebration, right? We were there for all four days? Yeah, we yeah. were. Yeah. Um, w- we were in the live um, panel right in there on the left Ooh. side. So right were, we, yeah. were, we, were you guys there too? I was at the uh, 
Star Wars show stage. Stage, gotcha. okay. I didn't get a poster. Uh, well, oh. we didn't sleep that night to get in line. <laughs> oh, so it, God. It, we were actually it yeah. wrapped around the entire uh, the entire event the center. Convention center. Yeah, we were up all we, night. Well, I got to Florida awesome. for celebration the Monday. No, Tuesday. The Tuesday before celebration. Sorry, oh. it was Thursday. I got there on the Tuesday. And Brock didn't have – I got my tickets uh, mailed to me. I got the four-day pass mailed to me. But Brock had to go pick it up. And then uh, I got a T-shirt with it. So I was like, well, yes. I'm like, well, just go get my T-shirt, which they did not have. No. And so we got there, and there was a lineup ha- like already around a little bit. And yeah. we're like, what are you guys here for? Is this for the tickets? And they're like, yeah. So we got in line. And then I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> like I just yeah. had a giant iced coffee because right. your drink sizes in America – are four oh. times bigger than ours. Yes, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm like, I just want iced coffee. What is this? Right. And so I drank it. I'm like, I got to go. I got to go. So I ran and I'm, I'm leaving and I see security. I'm like, yeah. and I said, what's going on? Which I never talked to people. So it was strange. And yeah. he goes, ah, nobody knows where to line up, but I don't care. That was basically. What? So the lineup <laughs> was actually for the 40th anniversary panel. That's what I. Two days away. Or the, they were there Tuesday night. We were there Wednesday morning. They were yeah. there for Thursday morning. And I was like, wow, I just have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> and then yeah. we got our tickets like that. They had nothing else but tickets. And uh, so you actually did the lineup for The Last Jedi, though. Yeah. We that did. was the we, one that we really put a lot of effort into. We, well, because yeah. when we got there, we were driving in. I was like, oh, man, we're driving in here like 3 o'clock in the morning on Thursday. I was like, we'll get in line right away. Perfect. <laughs> we roll up there. That line is out to the highway. It was yeah. out to the highway. And I was just like is this to get in the building or is this for the 40th or what is this? Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't really know how things worked. Um, so it was our, actually it was our first celebration. Um, we had yeah, mine too. followed celebration the year before it, we would have gone if it was last the year before, if it were here, uh, yeah. closer, but it was in Europe. So I was like, well, eh. yeah, lesson yeah. learned. Yeah. But yeah. So, so last Jedi panel there, uh, that was one of the most ridiculous moments ever when when do you, do you remember when uh so it starts off you know it's, it, the teaser poster is just focused in on ray and all yeah. of a sudden it just lifts up and i'm like holy Lost shit it. i'm like looking Lost at mike it. i'm like oh my god this is epic uh, and then you got one you guys got one right yeah we did we Thank were you. not leaving without one yeah <laughs> and we took those things like we were literally like we're going straight to the hotel we gotta drop these off yeah did, did you buy the protectors to- for them um no we took them out in the wind which was a bad idea <laughs> we were just holding them to Stupid. our bodies that we learned because like, so. I, I was in the i was on the main floor when that was going on because we didn't we decided not to sleep in the because i'm 36 and i i'm old That's and fair. i'm like yeah and, uh, and i was like if anybody wants to you let me know and whatever but i'm gonna sleep in my bed otherwise and nobody really wanted, it was weird nobody said anything i was like that was you know like Right. three other guys i thought for sure one of them would be like i need to see it in the main right. no huh. so uh but the minute they po- they're like and everyone's getting one the minute they said that i swear to you half the half the vendors there like ripped open this thing and they had whole like protectors oh, oh like perfect size i'm like where did how did you like <laughs> you, you knew know? this was happening yeah it was literally like guess what we have five dollars oh, yeah. want it yeah and i was oh. like if it comes with a poster, I'll take twenty. Just yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I was actually like, surprised they didn't sell that poster anywhere afterwards in the celebration. Well, if you right. if you got on the 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 celebration app, there were some people charging an oh. insane amount of money for them. Yeah, I saw so, those. But we didn't yeah. get the the Princess Leia one. We were sad about that. We we yeah. wanted that. That was a really good one. I didn't get anything. I got to see a Rebels episode early. That's all I saw. Yeah, yeah. nice. Yeah. Were you in that one, the Rebels panel? In other words, totally off track. We were the yeah, we were. Yeah. Was that the first day? That was the first day, right? The third day, the third day. Well, we saw the first uh, oh, Rebels saw, panel. Okay. No, we didn't get to see that episode. Not the, yeah, that's not right. The, oh, you no. watched the Dave Filoni panel. The Dave yeah, Filoni. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was the first day. Yeah, no, we went to the. Uh, we got there at like six in the morning again on the Saturday, and we got tickets for the Rebel panel easily, which was that was cool. We got to watch yeah. an episode. Yeah. Didn't give me anything yeah. though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's. I'm not a Soka Live shirt or anything. I mean, well, I'm wondering if people at like uh, D23, they're talking that people at D23 might get something right after that. Like, not just the, yeah. I keep hearing they might get something tangible. So, that'd be awesome. Really? Uh, yeah. I guess, or, I'm to, I guess I'm going to California. Yeah, exactly. All right. Yeah. <laughs> it's worth <laughs> it. Like, it's like next week, I think. So, I'm hoping. Yeah, the 15th. Oh. Yeah, next week. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. We'll have to do another video talking about the amazing trailer that we're not getting. Yeah, oh, I, I know. know. Jesus. That's disappointing. Okay, God. so why did Luke exile? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, if you had to make a bold prediction, I'm going to go, uh, my, wow. Would, like, j- why 
did he exile himself? What do you think happened right now? We're going to put it down. Well, I feel like I've already made these predictions. Just put it down right now. You laugh. Condense it. Just give it to me straight. (laughs) And we're going to go to James and see what he. I I said this in one of our podcasts. I honestly think I at first I didn't think he was at the academy when it was attacked. I think he killed everybody. Jesus. What do you mean by everybody? Everyone that was around. I think it was just a it was just a sense of rage and it was a force unleashed moment. Hold on. Let me help you here. Let me help you for a second. Come on. You're saying. (laughs) You're saying like when the Knights of Ren attacked that yes. maybe there were more of them or something like that. Yes. that you're saying and he killed oh, some of they, them. That's another issue. How can a few Knights of Ren take out an entire academy? It's not just a bunch of Padawans in there, right? I mean, there's some experienced oh. Jedi, I would assume, after decades of having an academy. Oh, well, I have yeah. a question for you. Yeah. What if it was only Kyle Ben Solo? What if that was his only student? Wow. Yeah, that's a. Yeah, I don't. I just. Yeah, I feel like there was there was more, but I'm not sure. But if that was mm-hmm. his only student, then then yeah, that would be a big that would be a big loss. That would make the loss much much bigger. Um, either way, I guess because if Ben either came back and persuaded some of them to join him, or if he just came back and killed everybody, because there's that uh, in the last Jedi trailer, you you've got that vision. Uh, it looks like even in the dream sequence, there's a lot of bodies. Ray, there's like it looks like there's bodies laying around, and yeah. I don't know. If that's a future, you know, uh, vision, or if that's like in the past, but a lot of bodies laying around, and I, I, it makes me think that those were, like, I'm wondering, like, Mike, it, was Ben Solo the only one who walks in there and just wrecks an entire academy? He doesn't or, seem skilled enough to do that. But or did he bring the first order? Was it like the first order attacked the academy, led was, by him? I don't, you know. Here's the thing. So Ben is obviously hell bent on finding Luke. He is. And seemingly wanting to destroy them. Did they confront each other before, you know, episode eight, maybe potentially have they confronted each other since? And maybe Luke, you know, confronted him. And then at that point said, I cannot kill my nephew. I'm getting out of here. I got to figure out what to do. Yeah. Do you think they confronted each other? Uh, what do you think, James? That's a Was there good a conf- question. Confrontation? I- you think well, they'd yeah, have to have confronted them confronted each other yeah but what if they the other point i liked is what if what if luke what if the knights of ran all or the first well okay Whew, so many thoughts but yeah. <laughs> you see that shot of phasma walking through the flames yeah. yes. and then yeah. you know you put that beside luke's hand on r2 which looks like right. it could be the aftermath of that so maybe it is a first order that goes in there and attacks everything maybe. because that would be led by snoke Yep. And what if Luke goes into exile because, you know, maybe th- something happened, something big happened, and Luke was like, I don't want to do anything, I'm not going to do anything, and then he just has to unleash on everybody, and he kills everybody, including Ray's parents, and everybody just, yeah. he just, yeah. boom, does this yeah. with his hands, and everybody just dies around him. And yeah. he's, like, he's like, I'm too powerful, I've got to go. Yeah. I got to figure, I got to figure out, and he leaves. And that's why the Jedi have to end. Yeah. Wow. Wow. (laughs) Because they could kill you with a thought. That's right. Listen up, Disney. Well, I actually think that (laughs) I think Luke Skywalker is going to be like extremely powerful for some reason. Yeah. Um, And it makes sense because like you have fewer Jedi. So like the powers maybe need to be bigger, more monumental so they can kind of influence the galaxy a little bit more. Um, But I just don't know. I the one thing that I think for me that had to happen is there was a disagreement or some sort of confrontation between uncle and nephew. And so that happens as well as the influence of Snoke. Yes. I think, well, actually one of the biggest things that I think in Bloodlines, did you read Bloodlines, James? Yep. Okay. So in that, do you remember how like Leia did not tell Ben Solo that her, that his uh, grandfather was Darth Vader? Like that was something that he finds, it doesn't really say in Bloodlines when and how he finds out, but like he's been training at this academy and Luke hasn't told him about it. Leia his mother hasn't told him about it. And it's like he finds this out as well as he's being manipulated by Snoke. Mm-hmm. And then maybe he had some sort of confrontation with Uncle Luke. And then he leaves and things are kind of in shambles. And then he brings back the First Order. I think you're right. right. There's, it doesn't, I mean, Kylo and the First Order aren't hell bent on finding Han Solo or Leia. They do blame themselves mm-hmm. for what happened to Ben. But you're right. There had to have been something that Luke did. Or something. I mean, he hates him. 
Yeah. It seems. Yeah, there's something. So, uh, yeah, there's something. How do you think Kylo found out, though? Sorry to cut you off. No, you're good. Because if he's alone with Luke training, because in Bloodline, we kind of learned that he could be alone with Luke. Like, she's like, Luke Mm -hmm. is training Ben. We don't know where they are, but it doesn't sound like there's a lot of people around them. Mm -hmm. And then the information about Vader comes out. But how would that get to Luke and Kylo or Ben? I should say Ben. Yeah, that's interesting. It could be like some news organ, like the hollow net or something, you know, that maybe it got, cause it was big enough that like it influenced the election of that first Senator position. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, it was, it was being, you know, thrown around. I, I feel like maybe somewhere along the lines, like, you know, they came across a smuggler or somebody in a spaceport and they heard about it or something. And then he confronts Luke about it. And mm-hmm. Luke is like, yeah, you know, that was, that was my father. You know, I don't know. I could have been Snoke could have been talking and, you know, Whispering into his ear. Yeah, Snoke but, could have told him too, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I just I just thought that was so interesting that he didn't know until he was like I kinda did the math. It was like I think in the movie we see him he's like twenty eight, twenty seven, twenty six. Something somewhere, like that, yeah, early twenties. And so like his early twenties is when he finds out, maybe he finds out that his grandfather's Darth Vader. I just don't I don't know. Yeah. You know, I mean that's that would be hard to kinda hear. And then if he is so powerful, like Snoke has foreseen in the dark and the light and Leia was sensing the dark side in him and Luke is trying to sort of like guide him through that. But yet he sees that they're holding back this whole other heritage piece with his father. That would that piss you off a little bit. You yeah. know, that'd be kind of like, well, you don't trust me. It yeah. goes back to Anakin and Obi-Wan. You, you, you like that whole idea that you don't trust me. You're holding me back. Yeah. You're keeping things from me. Definitely and then, Skywalker. Yeah. And then Snoke opens up the door with like, you know, here, there's so much more that you can learn. You're so powerful. Um, what have you. So, but there's still more to it though. There's something else though, that really, I don't think that would be the only thing that would really upset, um, Ben Solo with Luke Skywalker. There's yeah. something else like it. it now Luke I, dropped a certain point of view reference. I think like, just like Obi-Wan did and it pissed him yeah. off. Yeah. Sent him overboard. Yeah. So gosh, I don't know. I don't know. Skywalker saga. Yeah. It's a it's a soap opera. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It is. Ben oh. is Ray's father. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh yes. dear God. There's oh. so many things. Okay, let's. I guess that's a good point. As any to uh, wrap this conversation up. So yeah. Luke has taken the Barash vow because he killed Watto. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, might as well, it could be Watto. I think it is. <laughs> yeah, but he's taken the brash vow. He's done something that's caused him to need to go into exile. That's where we're. That's really all we know. Absolutely. So. We could find out in that Adventures of Luke Skywalker young adult novel that's coming out in two, two or three months. Is it September, yeah. October? It comes out anyway. Yeah. It comes out. The cover looks great. Yeah, yeah yes. it does. Yeah. Sign yeah. me up. Hopefully, yep. hopefully, we learn more. Anyway, guys, where can everybody find you at? Um, well, we have a, our YouTube channel is Rebel Watch. We're transitioning right now, by the way, because we we just decided to switch everything to all Star Wars all the time. All the time. Um, we were kind of just all over the place, and I was like, you know what? I I love Star Wars. We live it. We breathe it. So that's what we're going to do. So we're there but right now. Our Twitter is still at um, it's at We Can Look It Up. So you can uh, you find us on Twitter there as well. We're also on Podbean. Um, if you go to I think it's like just Podbean uh, forward slash. Rebel Watch, you should be able to find us pretty easily there. There's links in all of our uh, videos and stuff as well. But we're on Podbean there, and they've done a nice job of promoting us there. So we're yeah. we're happy about Podbean so. on iTunes as well. On iTunes, easy access yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah. Awesome and nice t-shirt. Yes. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. The little shout out to Rebel Scum. Dude, I'm about to show so, the cameras. This is so sick. Bring back <laughs> Teak. <laughs> Hashtag Bring Back Teak. This is. This was so cool when I saw this. I'm just like, Caravan of Courage. I, I love it. And then you've got, this is Battle for Endor. Battle for Endor, yeah. Um, and when Teak's in there, I just showed it to Mike the other day. And he was like, who the hell is this Teak guy? <laughs> like, you know, running around. A former oh, Jedi Knight, oh, I think. But oh. uh, that's another discussion, James. Yeah, my God. Oh, that one's it's coming up next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you guys did a review of Caravan of Courage, right? Yeah, oh. we did. Yeah. We were yeah. Check. We, we couple several, drinks. several drinks to, to get through that. <laughs> Yo, Liquid Courage. Me. You'll need that, of course. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, and you can catch me at Petsafina on everything. All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. May the force of others be with you. Hey, scumbags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video. As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.